All right, everybody, let's get started. So um, over the last couple of weeks, you've seen a whole lot of different sources. Um, you know, we started with this documentary 13th, which, um, you know, it looks like from reading your, uh, your reflections that there were a lot of things in there that were kind of surprising to us, which was good. Um, you know, as I had said to you, I thought that the, uh, the filmmaker definitely had an angle um, and, you know, she was making the case that, um, you know, there is this institutionalized discrimination that exists against African-Americans and, and really minorities as a whole in the United States. Um, and it's linked into our justice system, which we'll get into more later. But, um, but also a lot of you guys commented about um, some of the things in terms of like visuals and like media representations. Um, you know, a lot of people commented about how, uh, how shocking some of the, the portrayals of um, black men as being sexual predators were, um, and, uh, and in general, kind of the violence that we see associated with, with African Americans as a whole in media um, throughout you know, the last hundred years has kind of created this, this stereotype, right? Um, so I thought it was good that obviously you guys picked up on it and that it was, it was shocking how um, how uh, how prevalent it has been for literally over a hundred years, um, and uh, and and I agree with you. So I wanted to start even before we got into some of the the content. Um, you know, you guys read about um, kind of the origins of race in the United States and in America, and we'll look at some of that today as well. Um, but something that overlaps all those that I thought was kind of interesting that I wanted to show you um, were some of the depictions of race um, in like the scientific community going back into like the 17 and 1800s. Um, so, uh, so here, so let's take a look at some of this. Um, so like I said, these are all images that come from either um, like old science textbooks or like, you know, we, we call pseudoscience, right? Kind of made up science from, uh, from the 17 and 1800s. And I think they do a good job of showing um, how in a lot of ways um, you see a whole bunch of different kind of segments of society coming together and creating um, these understandings and these conditions that lead to um, a lot of the issues we have with, with racism and discrimination today. Um, so what you're looking at here is an image that's describing um, or attempting to describe where different types of people come from in the world. Um, this is kind of like an 18 and 1700s version of what today you might call anthropology. Um, this has no connection to modern anthropology though. All right. Um, and you see, there's a few things that they point out. Um, obviously it's black and white, but, um, you see the, with the map of the world, um, they have it shaded in these different colors and each one of those different shades is meant to denote, um, basically where like a different race originated. Um, and what you have here is um, you see they have these like nine different basically like human races that they've kind of classified as being um, you know the the main races of humans um, and they come from these different parts of the world now like I said this is just like blatantly incorrect um, but the point I'm making is this is coming from the scientific community um, at least in this era and you see on the bottom left they have these like five shades for color. We know that that skin color is is the most identifiable way that race is constructed. Um, and you know when you were reading the uh, the two articles about race, how they talked about um, like color being used to help codify like race based slavery. Um, so you know this is something that goes way back before uh, before the Americas in terms of being like a factor that was discussed. Um, we know that the, the slave-based system in, in the Americas is kind of the beginnings of our modern concept of race. Um, one of the other things that I think is, is particularly of note here is if you look at the bottom, you see those three skull shapes, right? Um, so I know we've touched on this before in class, but it's been a long time. Um, you have this pseudoscience, you know, kind of made-up science that develops in the, in the 17 and 1800s called phrenology. Um, which is basically this idea of measuring the size and shape of your skull um, and, uh, and then giving personality traits and intelligence markers and things like that um, based on the shape of your head um, 
And, uh, and, and this was another thing that was kind of tied in. It's the combining of these like physical traits to try to draw some sort of conclusions about, um, basically human beings. And, you know, it's, it, this isn't the exact scientific definition, but think of it as scientists in this era attempting to, uh, attempting to say basically that there are different species of humans and some are better than others. Um, so you see those three like head shapes were designed to try to to, to show that like different human beings had different skulls and thus were not all from the same group. Um, so this might be a little more familiar. Um, this is an old depiction of phrenology where by measuring like bumps in the shapes of your, of your skull, um, each one of the, the little kind of quadrants was associated with um, different personality traits. Uh, now again, this was all made up, but at the time, a lot of people took this seriously um, so these would be considered at the time by a lot of people like legitimate science, which is kind of scary. Um, now, as we work down, here's another example of how in the um, in like the 17 and, and more 1800s, a lot of this comes after Charles Darwin. Um, you saw an argument made to try to connect people through evolution, um, and uh, and what this is is trying to depict is basically the evolutionary path of these four different um, racial groups that were created. You see at the top, it says Negro, Hottentot, uh, Malay, and Australian. And these are, you know, four um, four kind of like racial groups that were, were created in this time period or were argued um, based on where uh, a lot of like indigenous cultures were in the world. Um, so these kind of pseudoscientists created this concept of race out of it. You see they have four different skull shapes that they've tried to create here. Um, and then they have, you know, kind of created this evolutionary ideal basically that, you know, um, in, uh, if, if we work our way from left to right, right, that, um, the, the Negro race is connected with, you know, elephants and giraffes and chimpanzees and the hot and tot race is connected with, you know, a couple of different types of rodents and, uh, that's a wildebeest on the bottom, um, or the Malay race is connected to a different type of elephant and, uh, like a water buffalo. And then the Australians are connected to all these different types of, of, you know, rodents and things like that. Um, and I mean, if, if you're looking at this and, and you're saying, what the heck am I looking at? Um, you're right. I mean, this is, this is, like I said, this is a classic example of pseudoscience, but you see, you know, it's laid out scientifically, or I shouldn't say that it's laid out like it is scientific, right? It's laid out like it's supposed to be some sort of textbook or something like that. Um, you see the date 1854 on the bottom. Um, and, uh, and this is the way that a lot of like racial construction was created in the world was that, um, there was this very deliberate attempt to try to connect different, um, like regional groups and different ethnicities to uh, these concepts of race, and um, and unfortunately, what it does is is it then is used as a way to kind of justify creating a lot of like split racially discriminatory uh, states. You know, the the United States was not the only place that had segregation. The United States was not the only place that had s uh, slavery. You know, obviously, uh, we tend to talk more about the U.S., but these types of things were used by Europeans to justify imperialism and to deny their colonial subject citizenship, um, which is basically, you know, kind of like a second class or an underclass, right? Uh, these are the types of things that were at the heart of like the apartheid uh, in South Africa. Uh, in Australia, the Aboriginal people were discriminated against in a similar way. Um, you know, this is, this is a, a, uh, a global thing. Um, and that's one, one of the reasons I show you this one in particular is that you see there's, there's several different groups that have, you know, dozens of different ethnicities associated with them that are all getting lumped into these, these four kind of races that were created, um, as a way to basically justify, you know, creating a, a caste system based on, on race and ethnicity. Um, this one too, I think is, um, is particularly kind of telling and, and, and pretty terrible. Uh, what you see here is this is an argument or a, a, a pseudoscience example of looking at the evolution of human beings in a broader way. And I think this one is more, more blatant. Um, so, you know, this is like tapping in on like Darwin and the idea that we all have evolved over time. But you see, 
you know, the, the argument in this, this image is that, yes, man has evolved out of, of ape, right, of chimpanzee, but they go from ape to, you know, an aboriginal figure. That's supposed to be a reference to, like, aboriginals from, um, like, Australia, um, to a, uh, an African, to a Native American, uh, to this kind of generic, what that's supposed to be. Um, obviously, it's kind of an odd image. But that's supposed to be basically the in, in the 1800s the um, like prototypical uh, East Asian basically, um, and then to a Caucasian right a person of European descent, um, and and what you saw were there were dozens and dozens of images like this that would be used to try to uh, justify imperialism globally and also um, like race based slavery in in the United States. Um, I mean, you guys have all taken U.S. history. You know, there was a lot of um, nativist sentiment targeted at uh, Japanese and Chinese immigrants. You know, you had the Chinese Exclusion Act, the Gentlemen's Agreement, which, ba which banned uh, immigration from Japan. Um, you know, obviously about discrimination against, um, you know, African Americans with, with slavery uh, and with Native Americans, with uh, pushing Native Americans west. So, like, this kind of is seen as one of the examples where they tried to scientifically justify it. Um, so like I said, this is not, you know, this is not just the, the clan or, or a bunch of, you know, kind of uneducated people, um, you know, just kind of spouting off racist nonsense. Um, unfortunately, what we saw was this very deliberate kind of coordinated attempt um, to scientifically justify basically racism throughout, you know, particularly the 17 and 1800s. Um, but, but it goes back farther than that, too. Um, and then the last image before we get into some of the terminology uh, is this one. Um, so, you know, nativism was a, uh, a, a pretty prevalent issue in the United States um, and uh, for, you know, well over a century. Um, and, and the thing about this that I think is particularly um, kind of important to, to note is that you also see these arguments used and targeted against really any ethnic group, too. Um, you know, we, we tend to use the words race and ethnicity interchangeably, which is incorrect. Um, we'll talk about that more in, in a minute. Um, but there has, in all fairness to people who, who use it incorrectly, there has been a very deliberate attempt to blend race and ethnicity by people looking to establish discriminatory systems. So like, we tend to use the words interchangeably, but for a couple hundred years at least, people have, at the in, in positions of power, have very deliberately attempted to make us confuse the two. Um, so that's why I like to point this out. What you see here is um, on the left, that is supposed to be a uh, depiction, a really obviously offensive depiction of an Irish immigrant in the United States. Um, you see, it it's, might be kind of hard to tell, but he has a... Um, like a whiskey bottle that's kind of seen as like a, a, a type of outfit that like an Irish immigrant would wear in that era. Um, and then you see on the, um, on the right hand side, Harper's, which was one of the biggest magazines in the United States. Uh, Harper's was, was, you know, if not the most popular, one of the most popular. Um, you see it says North and South on the, um, on the tipping scales and then black and white uh, on the actual scales themselves. And what that is, is um, a reference to a freedman um, and then a, uh, in the South, right, a, uh, an emancipated slave. Um, and then that's supposed to be an Irishman um, in the North. And you see in all these images um, that all three figures have this kind of like ape-like appearance, right? Um, that's very deliberate. And that's one of the oldest tricks in the book because what you see is they're tapping in, if we go back, on something that is is real evolution, right? Um, and the idea that, that human beings have descended from, um, you know, apes and going back hundreds of thousands and millions of years. Um, but they're taking that and now they are trying to distort it um, and associate it with race to say that different racial groups and ethnic groups are evolutionary superior or inferior to each other. Um, and obviously, I mean, I know you can see those those connections in the images, but um, I know that depending on, on the classes you've taken before, maybe you've never seen all of these kind of collectively and how this was was done. So that's why I wanted to kind of show you those, especially given some of the feedback that um, that you guys were giving me from uh, from in particular watching the uh, the thirteenth documentary.
Um, so kind of going back to what I was saying, um, a lot of this has to do with the really intentional blending of two things that are different, race and ethnicity. Um, so let's uh, so let's talk about those. Those are really the main two things we're going to look at today. Um, so uh, when we look at race and ethnicity, um, let's start with race. Uh, race, simply put, is a made-up thing. All right. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't impact society today. That doesn't mean that it is something that um, you know doesn't impact the way that our system works. Obviously, it does. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that race as a concept is something that was created, all right? It is not scientific. Um, and as you read in those articles that I had you finish up for, um, you know, over the past couple days, you know, a lot of it was done very deliberately to create a power system. So um, race in its purest sense, um, if you want to kind of define it, is basically um, a system that creates societal views about the superiority or inferiority of different groups. All right, race has always been used as a way um, to create uh, a hierarchy, a, a caste system, to use a term that we've talked about before. Um, and race is um, almost always rooted in what we would call subjective characteristics. You know, we've talked about this all year: subjectivity versus objectivity. Um, and you know, trying to apply objective or scientific methods to address social problems as opposed to subjective ones. Um, you know, things like ethnocentrism are subjective, um, and uh, and so race is an example of this. Um, physical appearance, if you think about it, is subjective, right? Um, obviously, you know, the the one we talked about before, skin tone, right, or skin color, um, that is something that is relative. Right. Um, when you look at things like height, all right, that has been used in the past. Um, like frame, all right, you know how muscular people are, how big of a frame people have, has been used in the past. Eye color has been used in the past. Um, you know, any sort of physical trait is typically a telltale sign that someone is trying to make a, a racial argument as opposed to one that is based on ethnicity, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, you also see, when we talk about subjectivity, perceptions of, of behavior. And when I say not scientific, what I'm getting at is this. Um, really, perceptions of behavior with race tend to do with stereotypes. Um, you saw a lot of this in the 13th documentary. Um, the kind of deliberate creation of this idea of the, the violent, aggressive black male. Um, and then attributing to um, you know, all black people this idea of aggression. Um, that's a perception of behavior, right? Um, you know, uh, a tendency or a um, uh, particular disposition towards certain vices is tagged a lot. Um, I'm sure we've all heard in the past, um, you know, one of the more vicious stereotypes against uh, the Irish is that they drink too much, right? That they, they're, they're drunks. Um, that's a perception of behavior. It's not scientific. Um, that is a stereotype that was created and was just said so much that then it started to become part of like the, the lexicon, right? Um, and those are the types of things we're talking about. Most of the time when we talk about race and behavior, the perception of behavior is designed to be negative to lower a particular group. Um, and then other attributes as well. Um, you know, uh, combinations of physical and, and mental um, traits, uh, you know, things like being smarter or better at certain types of subjects or things like that, or work ethic, you know, better, harder working or not as hard working. You know, all of these are things that, I mean, you can tell just by the way I'm talking about them kind of casually and off the cuff, um, they're subjective, right? These are not rooted in any sort of scientific fact. Um, and that's the problem with, with race is that race has been argued to be scientific using wholly unscientific facts and it creates this this problem because then you know a lot of these discriminatory patterns develop um, so ethnicity this is a real thing um, ethnicity is something that has developed over time um, it is linked with not just history but anthropology sociology um, and what ethnicity is, is um, really looking at the cultural background of different groups. Um, it's a combination of culture and today nationality. Remember, you know, modern countries are a relatively new concept. So nationality and, and culture at one point were different things, and now there's a lot of blending. Um, 
So when we talk about culture, um, you know, we talk about like cultural universals, right? Remember we made that list a whole uh, of, of all the various things, dress, dance, language, music, um, you know, social norms, right? Um, all of those sorts of things go into to a culture. Um, there's the idea of a sense of community. This should sound familiar. We talk about group formation, right? Um, with groups feeling bonds with each other. Um, a feeling of ethnocentrism. Uh, this one's tricky. We'll come back to it. Um, but most ethnic groups tend to have a stronger feeling and loyalty towards other members of their ethnic group. Um, sometimes this is called tribalism too, uh, which you may have heard of. Um, but most ethnic groups we do see have a feeling of ethnocentrism about themselves. Um, you do see that, that ethnicity is, is typically considered an ascribed status, all right? It's something that you get at birth. And then the last one is something we haven't really talked about, territoriality. Um, all ethnic groups have some sort of homeland, okay? Um, as in a, a place that they consider to be the, the area of their origin, all right? Um, a lot of the territorial disputes today, whenever you hear about like tribal conflicts, um, particularly you see them in, in Africa, in the Middle East, and in um, kind of like Central Asia currently, but these aren't the only places. Um, you know, uh, for example, in the 90s, uh, there was the Bosnian genocide that in a lot of ways was associated with territoriality where two different groups thought that they controlled the same land or the same land was their, their kind of homeland. Um, so all ethnic groups have some place that they tend to look at as their, their homeland. Um, and when you combine all these, um, ethnicity is, is something that can be um, really kind of scientifically looked at and, and documented. Um, now, you'll see here there's nothing about physical traits. And this actually goes back, if you remember, we talked about John Locke and Tabula Rasa, right, the clean slate. Um, when you are born, you are a blank slate, and then everything gets loaded afterwards. So what we're getting at here is regardless of, you know, maybe the, the kind of like anthropological origins, um, you know, someone who has uh, European ancestors, what this would argue is that if someone's ancestry was European, but then they were born and raised in a, uh, an ethnic culture in the Middle East, in Africa, in East Asia, wherever, it doesn't matter, they would identify with the ethnic culture of wherever they were raised as opposed to where their their ancestors were from all right um kind of getting back to the idea that ethnicity is rooted in you know upbringing and um you know what happens once you're born as opposed to like who you're born to if that makes sense all right um and uh and then the difference in all of this kind of lies in you know the various forms of prejudice we see um, and you can see why there would be some blending, because obviously there are some overlaps in the way that we hear people talk about race and ethnicity, even though they are these distinctly different things. Um, so some of this is probably, uh, you know, kind of a given, and you know this already, but I just wanted to make sure we had this for when we go into the, the, next, uh, the next talk that you'll be looking at tomorrow. Um, so prejudice in its broadest sense is just negative attitudes or generalizations, um, and in this case about, like, racial or ethnic groups, right? Um, and you can kind of look at these as, uh, in a lot of ways, like a flow, all right? Um, ethnocentrism a lot of times leads to stereotyping, and then stereotyping often leads to things like racism. Um, so ethnocentrism is, you know, as we've talked about in, in prior months, the, the belief in the superiority of your own ethnic group. Um, every ethnic group has this, okay? It's stronger in some than others, historically, um, but every ethnic group has demonstrated elements of ethnocentrism throughout its history. That in itself is not necessarily a problem as long as that community kind of keeps it in check. The problem is when ethnic groups start to look at each other and things like stereotypes develop, right? Well, I believe my group is superior because of X, Y, and Z reasons, and now I'm going to stereotype this group as being inferior to me for A, B, and C reasons, right? Um, and that's kind of this idea that, you know, you start to overgeneralize people that are in ethnic groups that are not yours. Um, and again, this happens at a societal level. This is not necessarily something that is happening in every individual of a group. Um, and then ultimately this leads to things like racism where, you know, a basically belief system is developed within one group that is created to justify 
um, treating other groups in an inferior way. And to go back, um, if we scroll back, this is what I'm talking about, right? To kind of bring it on home to what we were looking at in the beginning. These are all examples of ways that you create a belief system to justify treating other groups below whatever group you belong to. Um, and these are all examples from the Western sense, either from European or, uh, or American sources. Um, and, uh, and what we're going to be getting into is how all of these kind of ideas, uh, you know, over the next few days, how all these ideas develop, all right, how ethnocentrism, stereotyping, and racism develops in a society. We're going to look at some specific examples in the United States. Uh, and, and then ultimately you guys are going to analyze some, some examples of your own choosing, but that's, that's a little ways off. Um, all right. So that's all I wanted to do today. Not too long. Um, just kind of an intro. Uh, tomorrow we'll have another, uh, another presentation where we'll look and we'll get into the depth of, uh, of some of these things. Um, but, uh, hopefully that was a good intro. Hopefully that cleared up some things for you guys from the documentary and some of the questions that were brought up from some of the readings and, uh, and that's that. So I will, uh, I will talk to you soon.